Welcome to K1 World Grand Prix 2021 Japan, K's Fest 4. This is day two with the Nippon Budokan. I'm Russell Goodall. And I'm Nicholas Pettis. <coughs> we have a K1 lightweight uh, fight here between uh, Yuto Shinohara and Yuma Saikyo. Yeah, and uh, a little bit of uh, fun facts about uh, Yuto Shinohara is that he's from a almost purebed martial artist. Right. They have a dojo in his house. In the house. Yes. His dad is a karate guy and the fighter and everything, and his mom was a former ring girl. There you go. You, can, you can't get more thoroughbred than yeah. that. That is as purebred as you can become. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I mean, Talk about being born into a world, you know. Yeah, that's, that's really cool, actually. On the other hand, uh, Yuma Saikyo, mm -hmm. uh, also known as the Mirai Monster, which is the future monster, yeah. um, he has actually uh, decided to go up in weight to mm -hmm. fight in this weight category. <gasps> and when he was in a lower class, he actually fought uh, Leona Petas for the champion belt and lost it. And that's why Leona now has the cross belt. We'll, we'll talk more about Leona some other time. Yeah. Okay, so here's, here's you two. And Ooh, Yuma. nice start. It's about 174, 175 for Shinohara, same, similar height, about the same age too, 20 and 22. Also, fun fact about Yuto is that he actually dropped weight to get into this weight class. Right. So they're kind of meeting each other at the middle ground so, there. Yeah, middle ground. Yeah. Which is, uh, this is the lightweight, so 62.5. Oh, nice. Very slim and kind of... Oh, good low kick. I'm looking at each other, see, still kicking each other out with those kicks. <laughs> oh, nice one. Always in the first round, there's a lot of just sussing out, yeah. and feeling out, how, how is, you know, there's a lot going on that we really mm -hmm. can't put into words here. These like feeler techniques, you know, the one single low kicks, the one single punch and stuff like that. It's all about figuring out how hard he hits right. and how the feeling is against the opponent. Can right. you beat him and stuff like that. Um, yeah, this is really like just um, warming up for a chess game. Yeah, because I mean, if, especially if it's the first time you're fighting uh, someone and you, like, you only have some few videos to look at what your opponent's like, you, you don't really know them, right? Yeah, not everyone watches the videos, by the way. <laughs> no, it's true. Uh, well, 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 how would you uh, prepare for a uh, uh, new opponent that you never, never fought before? Uh, you have a general feeling mm -hmm. of what he does because mm -hmm. you've probably seen him fight somewhere. Right. I mean, the fight scene is not that big that you don't know the other fighters. So mm -hmm. I never used to like go in and study and like make like specific plans for it. I had an okay. overall general plan, for example, okay. and then I would stick with that. I think most of these guys, that's why you see them sussing each other out yeah. here in the first yeah. round. But there's still sort of a lot of investigation, shall we say, going yeah. on. Also, again, a classical, you, like in Muay Thai, you know, the first round is really just for feeling out each other, and then the pace goes up in the, in the second and third round, and that's it. But you can see he's got some damage on his leg already. He's all red. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, on, on red gloves. Yeah, so Yuma's hard. low kicks are hard. Mm. Right, yeah. He's already got a big bruise on his leg. Even so, um, these guys look like, well, all you can see is what they uh, just want to see what oh, Ooh, what strong punches. punches. Oh, man, this is going to be interesting in the second and third round. And that was one. Not a lot happening so far, but again, as you say, they were kind of chicken out each other. No, this is just classical fighting. I mean, this is what this is what happens in most fights when you got two guys that are really like confident and their level is high. Right. I right, mean, there's so no point in rushing to something stupid, right? Unless you want to knock them out in 30 seconds. No, but you see sometimes some of those you know tricksters that come in and they're super wild from from you know right from the beginning. It, right. It's like against the really experienced and the, the, the technical like great fighters, it just doesn't work. Yeah, that was really like a big bomb. I 
think that might have been his mom in the corner there. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. so. <laughs> well, I think you want all the support you can get from your family you know, yeah. and your, as, far as, as well as your gym mates. So, you know, yeah. We around here. We started with Shinohara and Saikyo. Man, you must go low kicks are really connecting. I wonder who's going to open up with the first like, big combination. Right, right, right. So at the moment, this is round two, so all the sussing out is finished maybe, and who's going to do this first strike? Yes. Please. Oh, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> that was the first real exchange. Nice. That was a hello, nice to meet you. Oh, but he actually got him a bit there. Mm. I like the way he switched the south ball to do that middle kick. That's karate, mm. for sure. Yeah, it's just like, you know, they're so experienced that they know how dangerous it is to go in first. Sure. And the I first see, time they I did see. go at it, yeah. <laughs> there was a really hefty, like, exchange. And it makes you cautious because you know what can happen. Mm -hmm. And you kind of want to get, like, that lead. So, yeah, no, and that's why, like you said, who, who's going to make the real so, um, onslaught, if you like. Oh. He's getting really good low kicks uh, landed there, Yuma. Yeah, stick with that. That's good. Oh, nice. Great reaction. Whoops. Oh! Nice. Sticking that low kick in there. It's good. I like that. Good hold. But they're kind of falling under the same pattern every time the way they do their exchange. This, oh, look at that. That was good though. That was actually connected for both of them. Right, so waiting. Are they waiting for each other kind of and sort of not falling into like a, a good match? Nice. Oh, those last 10 seconds of the fight are always super dangerous. So it looks like uh, Yuma got a little bit of a cut there. Right. I wonder if that's from a headbutt or from a punch. Because they're moving so fast, I couldn't tell, to be honest. Is Shinohara still standing up? Yes. Remember that. The, the, the sit down versus the standing up. Uh, secretly, I am rooting for him just for doing that. <laughs> Thank you. We'll note that down next year. Yeah. But it's, a, it's a good point. And it's an eye opener. Yeah. I'll say it again. Yeah. Only weak people sit down. There you go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it has been said by Nicholas Pettis. I won't believe it. Yeah, so a little cut there. And uh, the first turn, second round. Still uh, trying to sit down the rhythm. Tip, something like this, which happens. Oh, that's close. This is really cool because he countered with a jab on a middle kick. Okay. <laughs> So we're starting us the third round. Great low kick. Like he's been just working that leg constantly the whole rounds. That's why that's where the bruise is there. <laughs> it's getting redder and redder. Yeah. Yeah. 
bit of a two minutes left in this final round. So you're kind of hoping that they were just going to go for it, but they're just so technical, both of them? Right. Like, this is just the way they fight. Like, some people, like, I guess if they just wild and some people like I uh, kind of think well everybody thinks but it's more they, they use the techniques right like these, these two guys yeah but it's just that they know the risk for going in and banging it out is just like so high that it's just like they they just can't let their hands go right so there is a bit of that hesitation on both parts oh yeah yeah, yeah. it's just got a lot of respect for each other sure right mm. Nice low kick. Mm, swing that kick. Thank you very much for that. Okay. You know that, are they going to do anything more? In this third round. Oh, that was a big shot. Yeah, it is because it's so evenly paced out here. But I mean, one of these guys could fall at any time if they if they bang it out. Right, right. Oh, look at that! See, that's what I'm talking about. They're running out of time now, so now the pace has to come up. Ooh. Double hook there. Oh man! <laughs> oh, so nervous to watch these things. You know they're swinging with everything they got. Look at yeah. that. There was it. I don't know. Yeah, it's, a, it's like people like, you like know, the game. They, they play. Again, it's, it's hard to say who was the draw. Well, when you look at the <clears throat> all three rounds at the full fight in retrospect here, it would be like oh, Yuma oh, Saikyo is getting more clean hits with his low kicks. Mm. But is that really enough to establish Just a win? Uh, For me, I'm Sanji a little bit like. Oh, see? Oh, for Shinohara. Nice. Interesting. It could be a draw. Hmm. That was definitely because of the amount of low kicks that he landed clean. Right, yeah. Um, definitely a bruised uh, leg on the opponent there. I wonder which round actually got the 10 9 score. Yeah. Because it was 30 29, 30 29, 30 29. Yeah, yeah. So, which one of the three rounds that he got two of them and the other guy got one? Sort of, yeah, more, it's not as like, it's not a very kinetic kind of uh, fight, but then they looking down. I don't know. I, I mean, I think a fight like this is really interesting to watch because you can see that there's a lot more going on than just going in there and slugging it. Right, They're right. very calculated, very cautious. Um, but when they do fight it out and punch it out, a lot happens. Mm. Well, they have it. And uh, thank you all for watching. This was the K1 World Grand Prix 2021 Case Festa 4, Day 2. And the winner was Yuma Saikyo. This was Russell Goodall. And Nicholas Pettis.